Sue, take atheism. What are some affirmative arguments to show that is the correct way of thinking? The, the main reason seems to me that you can live a better life as an atheist. Think of the harm that religions do. It, not only do religions start wars, but they cause people within the same town, within the same village, to be fighting against each other because they believe in a slightly different God in a similar religion. It's horrible. You can get right out of that. Atheism just, you know, just it's not like another faith to set up against. It's just like, I'm not going to buy into any of those arguments. Let's actually live our lives with what we have. Let's try to be good people, build up nice communities, be kind and loving, just because that's, that's how we want to be. Forget all the God stuff. So in essence, uh, an atheist would have an easier time not burdened with the religious conflicts? Is that what you're saying? I think absolutely right. I think you you get rid of the religious conflicts, but then you can turn to questions of, of morality. See, a lot of people seem to think that if you did away with God and with religion, we'd suddenly, oh, I don't know, go out murdering old ladies or, you know, <laughs> crashing into people for the hell of it or stealing, I don't, but we wouldn't. Constant orgies. <laughs> Constant yeah. orgies, well, we might do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, we, we are evolved social animals with a whole lot of instincts for fairness, for sharing, for nurturing our children, for making friendships. These things are natural to, to how humans have evolved. So what I think we need to do is to nurture those without having to say they came from God, without having to set up great rule books that are supposedly from God. And this is ever more important in the modern world where we are faced with so many ethical dilemmas about cloning, about GM food, about, um, I, I don't know, all kinds of, of um, sex selection of babies and designer babies, implants in brains. I mean, all of these things, which religion can sort of pretend to say something about and find bits in the Bible or the Quran or somewhere that might be applicable. But basically, those books were written in, in a totally different world. So atheism is much better at taking those things and saying, right, what are we trying to achieve? Are we trying to achieve personal happiness, happiness of society, coherence, um, compassion? How can we do that and solve these ethical problems? Much, much better to do it from an atheist standpoint than to let a fictitious <laughs> God get in the way. Yeah. How would the world be different if everybody were atheists as opposed to all the different religions in the world? Well, I'm afraid human nature is probably they'd find something else to argue about. <laughs> they'd split off in different ways about beliefs and other things. I'm not, I don't <laughs> think we'd suddenly have a perfect world. But we certainly wouldn't have some of the cruelty that goes on in the name of religion. There must be something about individuals who are good people suddenly being energized and motivated to do some horrible things. And I've had a sense that it's the, the injection into our normal human uh, uh, emotions and motivations of a sense of the ultimate. That once you have this ultimate connection, fictitious as it may be, with the great spirit or the consciousness or the true church or whatever, that it suddenly gives you the license to do anything. And it, it frees you to do these terrible things. That's very interesting. The people who really, I think there is such a thing as, as coming in contact with the absolute. It's something like your ordinary sense of self and of separation from all other utterly disappears and everything is absolutely as it is and now, when that happens to people, the very last thing they do is go around going, oh, I've been in contact with the ultimate. You know, I mean, it's just it, because, it, because in itself, that kind of experience just undermines that whole kind of self stuff. And yet some people get a sort of a glimpse, and, but they obviously kind of lose it. And then they become all full of self-aggrandizement. And, you know, I'm holier than thou and I'm, you know, I'm in touch with the universe. I've seen God I'm, and it goes off. And that's, that's just, I mean, humans are like that. The ordinary way of being human is to think I'm very important. I'm in here. And therefore I've seen God becomes yet one more way to, to make yourself feel important. And, and given license by religions to say, you know, if you've seen God or had a personal relationship with Jesus, that makes you a good person. Again, you can get away with doing bad things and in the belief that you're good. Horrible, slippery slope. Does it surprise you in an age of science 
that the power of religion seems to be increasing, not decreasing. Oh, I don't know whether it surprises me. Uh, yes, it does surprise me. Uh, most of my life, religion here in Europe has just been gently going away. <laughs> Lovely. And now it seems to be coming back in this horrible way with it. Christian fundamentalism in the States, Islam burgeoning all over the place. I find it frightening and depressing and sad. I think I've got past being surprised. It's, it's, it's sad. It's like going back into the dark ages. It's like saying, for all that we've learned and begun to understand about human nature and our potential and what we are and how, how good we can be and what we're capable of, instead of that, it's like, oh, let's go back and believe in... But you're a scientist. And you're a great student of, of human psyche, and so but this is real. You can be sad. Other people are happy. You're sad. I understand that. But why? Why is it happening? Why is it happening? I think it's because people are frightened. And when they're frightened, they will turn to something that will make them feel better. And feeling there's a God up there who cares about you and that there's a purpose in this life and that if you work hard and, you know, that all of these terrifying things going on in the world won't matter because in the end you'll be good and you'll go to heaven, it's clinging on to that because the world is a scary place. And the scientific view, not that there isn't a scientific view, but the general gist, the way that science goes is, look, this is just a pointless universe. We're here for no reason at all. We just evolved because we happened to evolve. Things just went this way. Um, everything you do is just part of an ongoing universe anyway. That's pretty scary and it requires confidence and learning and open-mindedness and a warm heart. It requires all kinds of things to be able to live with that. So in a way, I'm not surprised that when life gets difficult and challenging and frightening, People hold on to the old certainties, even at the cost of denying truth and hanging on to falsehood. And it's getting more. It's getting, it's getting more. Because I think the world is becoming more frightening and more dangerous and more scary. I mean, look at the world now. We can no longer be isolated um, in our own communities and get on with that. We know that there are horrific things going on. We see it on the television. We know there are people being tortured even now. It's horrible to know that and not be able to do anything about it. You know, naturally, most of us would love to be able to stop it, and we can't. So there's all that horror. Then there's the, the, the scariness of our own lives, which are so competitive. Our kids are pressured so hard to do so much because everything's going faster. There's so many choices. We're bombarded, not just going in the supermarket and there's 58 sorts of toothpaste and 117 different kinds of baked beans, but, you know, what careers we could do, what car we could... I mean, it's all ludicrous, and now we're beginning to reap the um, uh, consequences of our profligate lives and the whole planet and global warming is going faster than, than anyone had expected. Certainly five years ago, I didn't think drastic climate change was going to happen in my lifetime and now I know it is. All these things are terrifying. I was about to say I don't blame people for cling clinging on to God. I do actually because I think they'll make it worse. Um, but I can understand why they do. But what I would love to see is people saying, God, look what we've done. This is not this is not about good and evil and God and Satan and stuff. It is about a um, biologically evolved creature that has got very clever, has got memes, as as memes are often running, spreading everywhere. The consequence is, is in danger of destroying its own planet. We've got to stop all this believing there's a God going to get us out of its stuff and actually make amends, get a grip on this believe what we are, little creatures, and try and sort ourselves out. And for that, we don't want religion in the way. <laughs>